Blue Story is a crime drama film from 2019 set in London. The focus is on two high school friends growing up and growing apart as they both fall into opposing gangs and become enemies in a violent post-Cold War that's gone on for decades. The film was written, directed and narrated by Andrew on World Blue, better known as Ratman. He originally rose to fame through a YouTube musical drama series called Shiro's Story, amassing over 20 million views. And Blue Story is just basically that YouTube series reinvented for the big screen. Despite its gritty and potentially explicit subject matter, gang violence, Blue Story still has a very teen feel, kind of like um, kidhood and adulthood if you've seen those films. Like very teen, but still very gritty. A bit of skins and a bit of kind of, you know, boys in the hood mixed together in one. It's also got a 15 rating here in the UK, which means you only have to be 15 years old to go to the cinema and see it. The film is very much about holding a mirror up to the trappings of living in these rough neighbourhoods and how young men can fall into gang violence without feeling they have much other choice. It's about educating not only teens that could fall victim to this vicious cycle, but others who may be ignorant to this cycle even existing, thinking, why don't they just get a job and ignore it? It's 91 minutes of rap man basically trying to tell us a true story or what is essentially a true story for a lot of young men growing up in the UK and I'm sure around the world, getting into this cycle of gang violence that seems to them unavoidable and a lot of times it is, but to the outside world, it might not seem unavoidable and that's why this film's so important because it shows you the reality of it and why these things happen and why these post-cold wars sort of exist and have been ongoing for years. The whole film's, you know, very much a teaching moment based heavily in, you know, morality and doing the right thing. You might have guessed this from his name, but Ratman also raps throughout the film and comes in to kind of narrate little sequences with verses and it's a little bit cheesy, I'm not gonna lie to you, it is a little bit cheesy, but that's kind of the whole premise of it and that's why it got big on YouTube because he um, incorporated rap into the story and used rap to tell the story. But it's a little bit cheesy, but that's all right. Anyway, my point is the film isn't all that shocking and it was made with the sole intent of shedding light on this vicious cycle of gang violence. It's a film with a very strong moral compass. So why was it banned in 228 cinemas across the UK and Ireland just one day after its release? Blue Story debuted in cinemas on Friday the 22nd of November 2019 and it was an incident during a screening on Saturday the 23rd that sparked the mass banning of the film across the UK. At around 5.30 at a VIEW cinema in Birmingham's Star City Mall, a mass brawl broke out, apparently during a screening of Blue Story. Police were called to a scene of allegedly hundreds of teenagers fighting after an image emerged online of a baby-faced teen holding a machete. According to media reports, the so-called 100-man brawl lasted as long as 90 minutes, with seven police officers injured, two machetes and a knife confiscated, and six people arrested. All teenagers, with a girl as young as 13, arrested for allegedly assaulting a police officer. There was never any real reason established for the brawling, but I'd hazard a guess that it was an idiotic dispute between misguided teens, finding any reason to beef with other misguided teens, but that isn't what View thought. The cinema chain were quick to link the violence to Blue Story, as there was a screening at the time, and it's easier to do that than blame any deeper rooted social issues. So, in response, they banned the film from all of their cinemas as they reconsidered the quote unquote safety and welfare of their customers and staff. View also claimed that in the first 24 hours of the film, over 25 significant incidents were reported and escalated to senior management in 16 different cinemas. Still, I feel a countrywide banning because of the Birmingham incident was a bit of a knee jerk reaction that, when you look into it a bit deeper, doesn't really make any real logical sense. But the UK's shit rag tabloid newspapers like the Daily Mail and the Sun were over the moon to hear about this banning from view and took it as a golden opportunity to demonize the film and young people of color. Sun writer and so-called journalist Hannah Carter branded the film a violent gang film made by the BBC and a gangster film. You see, she wrote gangster because that's how black people talk, right? Probably. I mean, how would she know? She's never met any. Too scary. Anyway, I imagine she probably looks a little bit like this. An absolute cretinous excuse for a journalist, honestly. Articles like this, like, boil my piss so badly. So badly. Just when, when they're written like this, it's just fucking... Ah, 
Anyway, the straight up contempt and completely out of touch tone was echoed throughout these pieces of shit papers. But thankfully, the good people of Twitter rallied and pointed out how illogical it was to ban a film for literally the unrelated actions of a group of individuals, who, by the way, were supposedly outside of the screening, as The Sun actually reported, and therefore probably hadn't even seen the film. So essentially, the papers and View were arguing that these teens were inspired to commit acts of violence by a film they hadn't even seen yet. I mean, for argument's sake, they could be stood in the foyer waiting to go and see Frozen 2. I mean, I know they probably weren't, but like, for argument's sake, that is the same thing. That is what we're saying here, that these teens were stood in the foyer, probably going to see Blue Story. Therefore, the violent film that they hadn't seen inspired them to commit violence. Therefore, we need to ban it in case more people that haven't seen the film commit more violence before seeing the film. It makes absolutely no sense. No sense. They had no link to the film aside from that they were stood in a cinema in which the film was playing at the same time. They weren't even watching it. Due to the public outrage and the questions of the reasoning behind the knee-jerk banning, four days after the incident, View announced that they'd start showing Blue Story again in cinemas that coming weekend, albeit with additional security. View Cinema's chief Tim Richards said in a statement, Following an ongoing review of security to protect the safety of our staff and customers, we hope to be showing the film from this weekend, with additional security arrangements in our cinemas to ensure everyone can enjoy the film in comfort and safety. Richard also said that he knew Blue Story was an important movie, and he never wanted to withdraw it. He continued, That's really our belief in the film and the message that the movie has. We've listened to the community and we know that this is an important movie for people to see. The whole discussion is about why teenagers are leaving their homes with machetes, with knives, when they go out. That's what the discussion is about. That's a broader discussion and not a movie industry discussion. It's a social discussion in Britain. I agree with Tim here, obviously, like his sentiments are true, but it doesn't take a genius to see that this was clearly something worked on by View's PR department after seeing the backlash online and then just taking the backlash online, picking what people wanted to hear and putting it out in a statement through Tim. Was it what really what Tim believed, what re he really, what Tim really thought in his heart of hearts? I very much doubt it, but you know, good PR move, I suppose. And at least regardless of View's misguided reason for doing it, we were still getting the film back in cinemas, which is the main thing. So essentially, the power of the people had came through and won, which is great. Blue Story's director, Ratman, shared the same misgivings as I do about the response and the whole Bannon saga, first posting on Instagram directly after the incident. Sending love to all those involved in yesterday's violence at Star City in Birmingham. It's truly unfortunate that a small group of people can ruin things for everybody. Blue Story is a film about love, not violence. Then speaking in an interview with the BBC about the banning, he said, Then you start thinking, is there hidden reasons here? What's the owner like? Has he got an issue with young urban youth? Is he prejudiced? Does he believe the film brings a certain type? Is there a colour thing? And I for one can't help think that Ratman was onto something with this. The linking of the Birmingham incident to the film and the resultant ban seemed so, so out of touch and more so an excuse to stop who View might have seen as undesirable customers coming to their screens. And the demonization of the film because of this incident by mainstream media was so telling of the ingrained culture of racism we've got here in the UK. You could feel the vitriol in these articles written by The Sun in the Daily Mail, just written with pure contempt and hatred for a film that they'd probably not even seen, because in reality, it wasn't really about the film. To me, there was a blatantly obvious racial or possibly class-related reasoning for the banning and the undertone of these articles. Blue Story may have inspired some people that don't usually go to the cinema to come along, from various backgrounds, people who don't normally see anything that relates to their reality being depicted on the big screen. And that's fucking great, because that's what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to inspire people to come along and see this film that might change their perception, change their view, or even help them out with that vicious cycle by kind of identifying it to them. And the way I see it, View simply didn't want those types of people there and used the Birmingham incident as an excuse to ban the film outright, stop people coming to their cinemas. Thankfully, this incident hasn't held back Ratman's career and Blue Story was still met with the critical acclaim it deserved. He's also signed a deal with Netflix in 2020 and is working on his next film, American Son, alongside Russell Crowe. And he's still rapping, of course. The man can do anything, despite the British media still trying to drag him down. 
I want to finish this video by saying big up rap man, keep doing what you're doing and keep inspiring that next generation because that is exactly what you're doing with your movies, you're breaking down boundaries and the reaction to Blue Story, the banning, the articles from The Sun, the Daily Mail showed just how vital and how needed these films are. You need to keep pushing forward, breaking down boundaries man, so big up rap man. As always, thank you so much everyone that stuck around to the end. You guys are all the real MVPs. I hope you enjoyed this one. Like I always say, my videos are supposed to be discussions. So jump in the comments and let me know what you thought about Blue Story. Did you enjoy the film? Do you agree with me about the banning? Do you think there was some sort of racial undertones to the banning and why that response happened to the Birmingham incident? Let me know what you thought about the film, about the media coverage, about all of it, because I've thrown a lot of opinions at you here, so the point of this is for you to jump back and discuss with me, respond and tell me your opinion, because I'm desperate to hear it and I'll jump in the comments and reply to as many as I can. As you may already know, we've just passed 10k subscribers and I'm so thankful. I've got a 10k Q&A special there. Uh, we're on the road to 20k now, so I want to keep this momentum going together and just keep rolling, keep going to the next milestone. So hit subscribe, hit like if you enjoyed the video. It means so, so much to me and keeps inspiring me to go forward with these videos. Uh, also, I've got Patreon linked there if you want to help me out a little bit more. It's like £2 a month. These guys are my patrons here already. I'm going to shout them out. They'll get shouted out at every video and you could be too. You could be on this list with these legends here. So come join the ride or dies, come join the crew if you're up for it and don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well or apply to a lot of DMs and you get to see what's going on in between me sat in front of the camera. But until next time that I'm sat down in front of the camera, I will see you later. Thank you for watching.